Hey everybody, this is Brent in Central Arkansas. Today's video is about using a trellis to grow fruit in a vertical manner. Growing up a trellis instead of across the ground. You save a lot of space. So this is about the hanging fruit on the trellis or arbor or whatever you want to call this structure. And I've got several examples of it I want to share with you to show you that it is possible you save a lot of space it can also add as a form of shade it's not over aggressive shade it does help in really hot climates to shade some below it and it's just everything's working out real great i've got a timer on <laughs> something so yeah i need to turn i've got an automatic timer so i need to turn the timer off because i'm uh fertilizing the beds here. Anyway, that's for a whole nother video. So let me turn the camera around and I'm going to show you some of the projects I got going on uh, and hanging. Most of it's the breeding work. Some of it's just to, to continue with seed. So I had to think about it for a second if I had anything that I was doing that with. So anyway, here we go. These first couple beds, I've got blackberry here. That's going to be another whole video, and it's reached the height I need to do to do the next step. All three, at, well, this one's almost there. And those hopefully will fruit uh, early fall, late summer. That's my hope. I've never grown blackberries in a raised bed before, so we'll see how that works out. Over here are grapes. Again, there won't be any fruit this year, so it's there's nothing to really show you. But the vines have climbed up and they're over to about halfway here. The one on the other side's even further along. And the one in the middle is almost to the top. So the intent is to let them grow across at least to this middle structure here. And then we will do a spur pruning. That's also going to be another video. The next two trellises are the honey nut trellis and the sweet meat trellis along with one here that I'll talk about in just a second. And so the honey nut um, typically look like this. And this one's already starting to change color. It's starting to mature, but they're usually a darker, smaller fruit like this. And yes, that is a fruit. So um, it's, it's a wonderful squash that we really like, and I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm crossing honey nut with a couple different cultivars. One is um, Tahitian melon squash, and the other one is Greek sweet red. I want to see if I can create a hybrid that's really good tasting and have hybrid vigor. Anyway, this is a honey nut that's quite a bit bigger than uh, the honey nuts that I planted from the seed company this year, which is this one. And that's because I'm pretty sure this crossed with the Tahitian melon uh, squash. And I saved the seed to grow more honey nuts this year. But it, it's obviously a lot bigger. And I've got a couple of those over here. And over there is one. Anyway, uh, that is going to be unique. It'll give me a chance to see how it crosses. Uh, honey nut crosses with uh, Tahitian ahead of the others that are over there, and I'll talk about those in just a second. So we're gonna move on to the other trellis here, and these are sweet meats, mostly. I've got one squash here that's a cross between Feroche Delicat and a um, winter luxury pie, which is a kind of a pie type pumpkin, and, which is a smaller type pie pumpkin. And I'll show you a picture of the fruit that I crossed it with. And we'll see how that pans out because I have another one out at the Lazy Garden that is round. This particular fruit that I crossed with Winter Luxury was more of a football shape. And so it came out more or less round, a little bit of a teardrop shape. And I think the one out at the Lazy Garden being round cross with a round winter luxury will produce the same thing more or less but round much rounder and still have that great pattern look at that pattern isn't that kind of neat so the purpose of this breeding is to have a a 
gen genus called C. pepo, which is a majority of squash, and they don't have many in that uh, C. pepo that are long keepers that taste that great. So I'm trying to improve on the taste of the C. pepo lines, and uh, that'll store a lot longer. So also on this is a variety called, an open pollinated variety called sweet meat. And it's got this grayish tone to it, grayish bluish type tone to it. Um, and so I've got this one here, this one that I um, recently crossed, somewhat recently. It looks like it's, hopefully it's doing good. It looks like there's a little bit of a hollow out there. So we'll see how it grows. And then, this one over here is also starting. Now I crossed it with kabacha. And kabacha is over there. I'll show you that one. And what I'm trying to see is if I can create a cross between sweet meat and kabacha that's also a long keeper and have some hybrid vigor. Here's another one of those that I was telling you about that's probably, that I saved from a honey nut squash that it obviously crossed with the Tahitian melon squash because it's so much bigger and it's starting to change color. I can't wait to try that, sample it compared to a honey nut and see what it tastes like. Now on this trellis here, I've got some Tahitian melon squash and this actually, even though it looks pretty good size, is actually a smaller um, fruit compared to what it can get. I've got some that I've pollinated here and well you can see them hanging down they're hanging down pretty good most of them were crossed with honey nut um, I, I want to see how that works I want to make sure um, that I get a cross between honey nut and the Tahitian melon squash both are open pollinated and so the hybrid the vigor of the hybrid will be there and it'll be really consistent because both are inbred open pollinated copies so a thing to consider when you're growing vertically instead of across the ground is that once a plant growing vertically like this one produces a squash like this one and it has seed in it that's maturing what happens is the vine will quit growing as much and it often will not set another fruit now growing vertically is a bit different it does that when you grow it vertically, but on the ground, what happens is the vine will start rooting where it touches, and that'll provide extra nutrient. And a lot of times, what'll happen is that fruit or that rooting will produce more fruit all along the vine, and the vine will just take off and go. And that's almost because those new rootings creates more plants, kind of more or less but the only source of nutrient it gets is way down here in the bed and then it goes up it's got a fruit going and it's like man I've, i'm pretty stressed on the amount of nutrient and what's going on here so i'm just gonna just kind of start halting production here and what happens a lot of times is once it gets close to finishing this will be a hard hard rind right here and it'll change to a little bit different color once that happens, the leaves will start dying back. And that's how you can kind of tell. This is when you grow it vertically. And again, when you grow it across the ground, um, a lot of times, and in fact, most of the time, it'll root along the way, along the vine, and it'll produce supplemental squash that you wouldn't get otherwise if growing vertically. So to, to how do I put this? To increase the amount of fruit I get when growing vertically, and overcome that deficiency in the amount of fruit is you plant additional fruit here and you can grow them a lot closer together and then when the fruit grow up and they grow one fruit it and it kind of stops you'll have lots of vines like this here and they can grow really close to each other and you'll get a fruit on every single vine and I kind of knew that but I figure growing in the beds this year may produce differently than the other times I've grown in containers and raised beds and so that didn't quite happen with this so I've got more plants growing and my intent is to let it continue to fruit in fact there's two in this here and there's two right there so there's four additional plants growing 
Now over here, I've got another one of those. I told you it was my high nut squash that I think crossed. Um, this actually came from the big squash and it's um, that looked really similar to this one, but even bigger. And I say the seed and I call it uh, um, potential cross and honey nut was the one flowering the most. So I thought there was a good chance it will pollinate with honey nut uh, because that was the only machada that was flowering quite a bit. And that's exactly what happened. This looks nothing like the parent I pulled it from, which is very similar to that one, which is a Tahitian melon squash. Nothing, it looks nothing like it. And I got another one over here that's the same. And there's two on this one. This one isn't producing um, the look I like. I like more of this look right here, only a little bigger. And the one right back over there I showed you a minute ago, that one's ideal. Okay, so on this, I did two of that. I just plugged them on the end because I just wanted to see what uh, what pollinated that Tahitian melon squash. So on this trellis really is a kabacha squash. And this is what the kabacha looks like. And it's a Japanese, AKA pumpkin. They call it a pumpkin. A lot of places overseas call these winter squashes pumpkins. We don't call them that necessarily, uh, but it is a Japanese uh, bread winter squash. There's a whole lot of versions of kabacha now, but the point of me growing kabacha besides um, eating it and tasting it for the first time was to cross it to that sweet meat. This one up here has got a really good size. So as a, an open pollinated here, I'm gonna make sure and save the seed from this particular one over these. So these are selfed, which is why there's a white tag on it. Right here, I selfed it. I took a male flower off the same plant and pollinated the female This from this pumpkin right here. And so that seed in there will be this uh, pure seed. And so I crossed it with the sweet meat. I think that'll be an excellent cross. On these last two trellises here, my camera, my little GoPro camera is getting warm. Anyway, I hope it doesn't cut off. Anyway, this last trellis here is emerald sweet cucumbers. And I've got, I've been getting a lot of them and I do have a lot of them, but if you let them get nice big slicer size like I like what happens is after you harvest it two or three will not produce because the plant thinks it's got mature seed on it and so it just kind of stops for a little bit but once you pull it what will happen is it'll start picking back up again like this because of the way that works again this these vines are not able to root in the ground so they're not going to continue to fruit constantly because you want, uh, in this particular case with Emerald Sweet, you want about the 8 to 10 inch size big fat cucumbers because they don't have, it's a part of the variety and they don't have gel in them. It's just a lot of great meat, a great tasting cucumber. So I've got three here and I've got uh, several cucumbers in the refrigerator. I've been eating the hound out of them. But you can see the fruit has kind of stopped and it's about to pick up again. So to combat that where I can continue to get uh, cucumbers, um, some will produce, some won't, I'll have a consistent supply. I have replanted, you can see down here and over here, I've replanted these. And it won't be too terribly long. These will start going up the trellis and they will provide the additional fruit that I need. And you can see here that these vines, you can't even really tell that I have cucumbers growing up here until you get up here because I've removed the bottom leaves. So that's what my plan is for the cucumbers. More or less, I'm going to start planting more plants that can grow fruit going vertically um, to meet the needs uh, that I would like, the higher production needs that I would like. And this one, you can see that I planted more. I think there's six here. These are Greek sweet reds. And I planted so many because the only thing I was going to do with these was grow them to where the male flowers, like this one here. Well, here's one that'll be open tomorrow. So that I could take these male flowers 
and pollinate the, uh, the honey nuts. So that was initially the only purpose of those. But then I got to thinking, well, I want to save the seed from these too because it's been a while since I saved the seed. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to take the honey nut and I'm going to pollinate the Greek sweet reds with the honey nut flower, the male flower coming over here to this female. And that's what I did. And that's why this is a yellow flag on it with HN, honey nut. The same with this one. Now Greek sweet red is open pollinated. It's not super consistent, which I kind of don't like it, but it's got a great taste to it. So I think it'll do great with uh, honey nut as one of the parents across with it. So I've got lots of little Greek sweet reds growing here. That's a nice one. I, can't, I don't know if I showed that one, but the vines are, it's doing really, really good for a vertically grown winter squash. Greek sweet red. I can't talk about growing fruit vertically unless I talk about tomatoes, right? Well, my lazy garden over here, out there, is almost all tomatoes. So I'm a huge, huge tomato guy. But I also have some over here. These are the, this is the dwarf raised bed. And I'm, I'm looking to further uh, rocket bear and dark bear dwarfs. Um, to, to grow those two varieties, a dark and a red, and um, to further those and just save seeds. So I didn't grow a lot of them because this is, I think, the third or the fourth generation. Rocket Bear is a back cross to bring in some fruit size. I've already talked about that once, but one of the things I wanted to talk about was growing tomatoes vertically. They do great, especially if you single stem them. Now, there's tons of tons of videos on whether to suck or something or not grow them single stem or double stem so i'm not going to get into that but i will tell you that these dwarfs have done something that kind of surprised me one is that i noticed that my dwarf dwarf tomatoes were getting so thick and bushy and they were still growing taller probably trying to out compete each other and they were it was so dense it was very hard for me to tell if there was fruit set in them. So what I did is I more or less single stemmed them because my main goal was to save seed to carry to the next generation. And I also wanted big, the, to do this with the dwarfs, uh, the dark bear dwarfs, because the back cross produces a lot bigger indeterminates. The next generation from the back cross, I'll have dwarfs like these with this type of foliage. I know because the parent of rocket bear dwarf was the same way exact same way so i did get the bigger fruit i'm getting nice 10 10 ounces plus size fruits like this one's probably about nine the one behind it's probably about 11 or 12 maybe even bigger but i am getting nice big fruit and that's very awesome to me because i know i'm gonna get dwarf plants from the seed i say from these so i'm picking the best one or two to carry forward but to get to this what i was talking about with rocket bear i went to trim these and i started growing them single stem and i'm thinking these grow amazing as an indeterminate uh, some people think of um, the plants that are in between indeterminate and dwarf are, are um, called semi-determinants. I never liked that term because determinate means to me that they'll grow to a determined size, then they will stop with the growing tips like this. So to me, it would have made sense to call it a semi-indeterminate, something that's in between a dwarf and in, in between a uh, indeterminate. And I even said, well, I'm just going to call them compact. On this trellis here, these are brandy bear. And brandy bear is a compact. Brandy bear is the parent of this one here, rocket bear. I'm sorry, I'm going to go around to the other side because of the air conditioner. So I'm growing these and I'm thinking the indeterminates always have some sort of leaf issue they're really long and bushy 
in most cases. And a lot of times when they get a little size to them, they start having leaf issues. I don't know what it is. But I noticed last year on my dwarfs, I was not getting the bacterial canker nearly as bad. And the leaves were, they look pretty good, just like they do now. There's a little bit, but they're darker green. They always are darker green. They have a little bit of ruffle shape and the leaves are really short. They're six, seven inches long. That creates a beautiful single stem plant where you can plant a lot right next to each other and they don't interfere with each other nearly as much. And then they grow, as you can see rocket bears behind it, they grow almost as fast, single stem, as an indeterminate that has a sort of compact growth habit. Uh, in actuality, rocket bear dwarf crossed back to brandy bear produce stems and vines that are longer than brandy bear even. And I don't know what that is. It's just a combination of genes. But I'm really looking forward to Rocket Bear's tomato uh, fruits next year being larger and having this type of foliage. And that's going to create what I'm going to call a, instead of semi-indeterminate, I'm going to call it a compact. And see if, run some trials and some tests to see how they compare over a longer period of time growing in single stem. Let me tap the camera here so I can see that you can see me. So that's pretty much it. Those are my vining um, fruits, tomatoes and squashes and grapes and, and blackberries and just all kinds of all different kinds of species and crosses. And they're all doing great. I'm learning lessons. The raised bed garden's doing phenomenally well, which I'm very thankful for. And I thought I would share it with you and discuss some of the things that are going on in my projects, uh, plus how things are growing vertically for me. Maybe you could get some ideas. If you like the video, please share the video. If you like the video, like it. And if you really like my work, subscribe. Leave a comment and I'll talk to you about anything at all. This is Brent, you guys. We'll see you in the next video. I can be real